Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Hi my loves. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. This is my first ever life update, but it comes with perfect timing because there has been so much that has been going on. And I know that for many of you guys, you already know, but this is just me talking about it and us just sitting down with a cup of tea. I have a caramel macchiato from Starbucks that I'm gonna be sipping on. Um, you can have water or juice or whatever, whatever snacks you want, but I just figured that this would be a great time for us to get together, for me to update you, for us to talk, for you to see what I've been going through and what I've been, you know, uh, what my life has been looking like because I wanna share it and it feels weird not sharing it and this is the perfect area for me to do that. So, I guess I should start by saying, oh my god, there's a tomato on my plant. I've been waiting all summer for this and there's finally a tomato on my plant and now we have to go look at the tomato. Come on, let's go look at my tomato. Look at this tomatoes. Look at him. Hey little guy. I love you. Welcome. Do you have brothers and sisters? Just the one. Uh, really quickly, shout out to H&M. H&M for making this hoodie that has the um, the moon phases on it and sacred geometry so I had to pick it up and this was a little while ago so I don't know if they still have it but H&M has been doing a lot when it comes to astrology and celestial type of stuff and like witches, the witch community and I just, you know, you want to keep your eyes open for these types of things during Halloween, like October time, at least in this area because that's when you start seeing a little bit more of it. Just a little FYI heads up if you haven't already picked up on it or if you have interest in these types of things. Also, please excuse my appearance because I'm in the... Pro I'm, about I'm about to get my hair done. One of my good friends is uh, coming over today and she's going to be doing uh, a sew-in situation because it's just so much easier having a sew-in versus me having my natural hair out during a move. Feel free to agree to disagree with me on that, but that's just what I'm going to be doing. Just throw a hat on, pick up a box, and be out. So it just makes life so much easier. But that being said, this move to New Orleans, we need to talk about it. So this is what happened. Years ago... And this video is going to be chatty because that's the point of it, is me just kind of giving you guys updates. Years ago, before I even went to New Orleans, I fell in love with that city. And there was something about it that made sense to me. It resonated with me, especially when it came to, to the voodoo aspect and just the life and the food and the people. I, I'd never been, but there's something about it that just vibed with me and resonated with me. And I was just like, I need to go to that city. That city is everything. And um, I was still, you know, studying my own uh, practice, building my own spiritual practice. But I keep an eye out for these things that I gravitate towards because they end up ultimately being significant. Now, flash forward or fast forward to today's times, I looked at my chart, my astrocartography, and I can see that Uranus, um, my Uranus DC goes right through the line of New Orleans. So I'm like totally open to what you, uh, New Orleans can bring to me. But for those of you guys that don't know what astrocartography is, it's your it's the placement of the planets that fall within the the world, our world, and how different places impact you in your life and when you go there how your life changes because the energy of that planet is infused in that city. So there's Mars on over Philadelphia, which makes a lot of sense because Mars is about activity, action and ambition for me and well across the board but in Phil that's where it falls for me in the US and it makes a lot of sense because Philadelphia is where I'm the most driven I'm the most motivated I can't stop won't stop and that's what propelled a lot of Bahati life and got me to where I'm at now is that momentum you know keep on going striving and achieving because that is Mars energy so I'm open to see what you know New Orleans brings to me but anyways back to what it was that I was saying so I um and I'm also interested in hearing where you guys feel you you've been drawn to. I was pulling charts for a client recently and she was like, "Oh, I'm drawn to Texas, like an area in Texas." And I was like, "Well, hold on, let me pull your astrocartography." And of course, one of her planets, I can't remember which one it was, 
uh, moved right through one of the exact cities that it was that she was talking about and she had no idea why she was gravitating towards it but when you pull that chart it helps to explain it so New Orleans long story short New Orleans is one of those places for me and I'm interested in hearing if you've ever pulled your astrocartography and where you have gravitated towards and what happened to you when you when you went to that location how did it change your life how did it impact your life I'm talking about this now because of course we're gonna talk about astrology but also because I'm doing my own personal personal research. You guys know I'm always researching. I'm always studying astrology. I'm always trying to master my practice for myself and also for my clients and the work that I do. But that being said, New Orleans. So I always felt myself being gravitated to, to New Orleans, but I never understood why. Then to the point where my ex-boyfriend at the time was just like, you know, we were planning on making a trip to go there, but he was like, in the meantime, there's a spot in Philadelphia that you can go and you can try beignets, and I always wanted to try beignets. So I was like, yes, take me there. So we went, and I was like, that was cool, but now I definitely need an actual bite of New Orleans. This bite of this beignet is not enough. I want to actually go to New Orleans and have a bite at Cafe Du Monde, but I have my own personal preference as far as what is the best, um, uh, beignet place in New Orleans and if you want me to I will share that with you down in the comments just let me know but anyways moving forward so then Princess and the Frog comes out and I was so excited number one that there was gonna be a black princess and but then when I found out that she was coming from New Orleans and that she was building a business and a brand for herself and then that there would be aspects of voodoo that were tied into this Disney movie, I was like, sold. Now I'm saying all of this to you guys because this is around the time where I'm like, why is New Orleans gravitating towards, why am I gravitating towards New Orleans? What does New Orleans have for me? I don't know, I just wanna go there, I just wanna be there. And all of these signs just kept on popping off and were showing up and all of these interesting things and Finally, I go and I fall in love with that city immediately. I immediately. I'm not the type of person that really is the one to kind of travel the entire world. I do like being at, at home. I'm a homebody. But um, that being said, like, you know, the places that I'm drawn to are important to me because I'm not one to really go out. You know, I just study. That's that's what my chart is set up for and that's who I am. I just study and I research and I pull charts and that's what I do. Um, but I end up going and I, as soon as I put my feet there, I not only am I vibing with the spirit world and you guys know that New Orleans is a hotbed for spirit, spirit activity, meaning like paranormal, um, ghost spirits and those types of things. But the voodoo culture, my first few trips that I went I didn't get a chance to really sink my teeth into the study of, vo of voodoo because that's not where my family originates from but I learned so much about it and I wanted to dive into it and learn more so I just set the intention this is where I wanted to go this is where I wanted to be this is where I wanted to live this is what I wanted to do but I didn't know how and I didn't know when and I didn't know you know where at specifically in New Orleans so I set the intention that I, you know, recently I'm like, I wanna, I have my apartment in Philadelphia, but I, th I just felt myself looking for any excuse to go and any excuse to visit. And it just made sense for me to, I know this sounds crazy, but because I wasn't sure if I wanted to, you know, just completely cut my lease in Philadelphia and cut my tie with Philadelphia. Philadelphia has been my home for five years and it's done so much for me and I still resonate with this place 100% and I love the connection to New York, the access to New York and just Philly, like my friends are here. Um, but I wanted to go to New Orleans. I wanted to live in New Orleans and so I, I, have the resources I guess and I knew that it would be good for my brand and for for my business um, I knew that it would be good for my spirit my soul because when I go to New Orleans I'm not kidding you guys know if you've been a follower of Bahati life and you see how I change in different environments New Orleans is one of those places that I always get quiet I slow down and my priorities really shift and change where you know I don't know, I just I just kind of ground a lot easier in that space. And for some people, again, you either love New Orleans or you hate it. You either vibe with it or you don't. 
um, and it's a lot energetically but for me it, it makes sense I'm not bothered by the spirits I don't I'm not bothered by the energy of that space I, I personally love it I do steer clear like I do steer away from Bourbon Street because I'm not a drinker and Bourbon Street is disgusting but Anyways, so I set the intention that I wanted an apartment. I wanted it to have a courtyard because a lot of me likes to be outside. And I just wanted something temporary so that I could find my roots in that city for, for the time being. And then I can try it on, so to speak, and live there and see if I liked it, see if I loved it. Or if I just, you know, maybe Philadelphia has more, to me, more for me long term and New Orleans just has a temporary solution for me. So we'll see. That being said, my ultimate goal, it's very important I think that I mentioned that what I ultimately see for myself is not living in a city. I see myself having a home but having a garden. Oh my gosh, 11-11 on the, on the time. But um, yeah, I see myself having a home, a garden, a few chickens, I'm not kidding, having a self-sustaining garden. And that's not something that realistically I can have while I'm in Philadelphia because the growing periods here up north are so short and down south they're, long, they're, they're longer lasting. So that means that I can grow vegetables and fruits and herbs for longer periods to feed my family and also ultimately to share with my tribe with you guys because I definitely see myself having big bundles of sage and other herbs etc etc so New Orleans is just one of those areas where I can have that while still being kind of relatively connected to a city without having to be totally completely disconnected that also being said my family's from the Caribbean and you know um, I it's really important to me that I'm able to explore and experience some aspects of Caribbean of the Caribbean and also um, African American culture and lifestyle without having to be removed from the US and that's what New Orleans delivers that's what New Orleans gives is that those little aspects of the Caribbean Jamaica Haiti and surrounding areas while still being in the US and I can still go to a post office and I could still get a cup of coffee and have the, the modern conveniences of just living in the US which we're so blessed to be here you know so that's what New Orleans brings that's what New Orleans gives to me and we'll see I mean I'm not gonna lie to you guys it's definitely a brand new space for me. I've never lived in that city before. I don't really know a whole lot of people. That being said, too, um, I the apartment that I'm moving into, I've, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I know that sounds wild. I had a friend go and look at the space for me. I, I saw it on Trulia, and I reached out to the person, my landlord and I said look this is what I'm you know doing and then everything that it was that I asked for he was able to accommodate for me I was just like yeah that works that's fine that's that's perfect whatever you need is what I'll do it has this beautiful koi pond which I'm so excited and I can't wait to see it I haven't seen it I've seen pictures because my friend went and looked and took photos for me but and he was so sweet for doing that and I'm so grateful and you know who you are so thank you so much for doing that it really like touches my heart and it just shows you that there are people out there that you know, I do have a good core group around me, but it shows you that, you know, there are people out there that have really good hearts and good intentions, and just as I would do anything for anyone, I just love that seeing how, you know, people that I've just met can see that in me and do that for me and know very well that I would do that for them, so it just, you know, it, it's, it's been so awesome. But anyways, um... So when I see the apartment is probably when you guys will be seeing it for the first time. So I'm wanting to bring you guys with me. I'm wanting to vlog it. There will probably be some tears and some laughing and some quiet moments and some loud moments because that's just who I am in a nutshell. And yeah, we'll be doing this together. I'm packing very lightly. I'm bringing a suitcase and I'll be living out of that suitcase for a few, for, for a few months for the most part. And I have a few small boxes that I'm having shipped in, you know, just a few items that I'm going to pack up, meaning like a blender that I use to whip up body butters, um, a few things that I just can't, you know, that I would want from the apothecary down in New Orleans so that I can do my work. And I'm very particular about what I use and, you know, how I use it, so I want them to be specific. <laughs> Hey. 
hi, I just got your text message. I saw that you're leaving. I'm in the middle of the filming. What's up? Okay, uh, I was just telling Bliss I don't want to have coffee with my mom real quick. My mom just like go back from rushing out on her. Yeah. So I'll call you there. No, take your time. Okay. I love you so much. Love you. Can't wait to see you. Bye. Sorry guys, that was one of my best friends who's coming in. She just flew in from Jamaica at this beautiful wedding and I can't wait to see her. And she's another person in my life that I'm just like so lucky, so blessed to have. And I'm ultimately I think I'll be a little closer to her when I move to New Orleans, but we'll see. So anyways, um, yeah, I mean, I'm packing really light and this is perfect. I have to say that living in Philadelphia has changed me in good ways and in bad. Philadelphia has kind of disconnected me away from my own nature, I feel, where I was practicing minimalism and living a, a simpler life, more creative, um, more connected with nature, of course, before I moved into Philadelphia when I was living in New, New Jersey. And it makes sense because New Jersey is more nature oriented than, and nature surrounded than Philadelphia is, unless you go to places like the Wissahickon Trail or the Schuylkill River Trail. Um, but just in my area. But at the same time, Philadelphia has served me in ways that has made me motivated and made me really driven. So everything happens for a reason, but I need to restore the balance for myself. And I want New Orleans to do that for me. I want to reconnect back with my roots. I want to reconnect back with my spiritual self, my personal practices without having distractions. I want to be able to slow down. I want to be able to dive back into, again, um, minimalism and African-American studies and Carib the studies of the Caribbean and just everything and slowing myself down a lot significantly. I don't know what that's gonna look like for the apothecary, but I also wanna dive deeper into my spiritual practice in that city. And New Orleans can give that to me and Philadelphia can't. We used to do drum circles all the time in Florida. I haven't found a drum circle in Philadelphia since I moved up here. And the type of friends that I've met up here have been amazing, but they're different than the friends that I've made when I was down south, and they have different interests, and I want to explore those areas and those people in this new city because that's who I've always been to my core, and I feel like New Orleans can give that to me. So there's just so many different reasons of why, and I'm emotional because, again, I don't know a whole lot of people in that city. I do have some friends, some that I met through Instagram and some that I just met because life blesses me and loves me so much <laughs> and so we'll see with that but I am going to push myself to connect with different groups connect with different tribes um, slow down ground and blog and write more so and then also take my take my magic and my practice to different levels I don't fit in with the regular norm of what magic looks like, especially as a black witch, but I'm just going to root myself even deeper into myself and explore that. So I'm excited. <laughs> now, next update is the storefront. So that belongs, I feel like there was a miscommunication when I announced the storefront. So the storefront, it was actually perfect because I was wanting to get a storefront in Philadelphia. I don't wanna disconnect or cut ties with Philly. I love Philly. But I don't wanna have a storefront where I have to be tied to anything. I just want to be able to work authentically from my altar space and deliver. And that's what this storefront does. So I paired up with one of my very good friends, Kat from Stone Cooper and, to, and Britt from Tesoro Leather. It's technically to, um, Britt's shop. She has an amazing shop and she has amazing quality of work and that was one of the reasons why it was an easy yes for me to provide in her shop with her and for her. And also to work with Kat was just a natural yes, again. So that is based out of Philly and that will stay. Um, but for October, November, 
and the rest of September the shop is closed while I focus on writing I focus on projects and getting out information for you guys and connecting with you guys and I know that for some of you guys you're gonna groan because you want the apothecary to be open you want to be able to shop you want to be able to get the oils and I understand that but I am learning to slow down and to simplify and to give back a lot to myself right now so that I can give more to you and who knows what that's gonna look like but I just know that this is what it's gonna look like for the time being but what you can expect is a lot more blogs a lot more videos a lot more of me sharing about my personal practice a lot more education and I'm going to be working on my tarot grimoire as well as another project that I'm working with Spirit de la, Spirit de la Lune for their uh, planetary calendar which was so dope we did it last year and we're gonna be doing it again this year so keep, keep your eyes out for that especially for my witches who like to set intention and work with the energy of the moon I'm gonna be diving into that really hard and heavy so you'll have that at your fingertips very soon sooner rather than later now let me pause this really quickly because my recorder is going to cut me off in just a minute. What other updates do I have? Aw, oh, Moochie. What other updates do I have? I feel like that's it. And it's not it though. There's a lot that's been going on. I do want to say, guys, I'm so grateful. You guys already know this. I say this all the time. But I'm so grateful for everything. I'm so grateful for being able to share this with you. Just every step of the way, it doesn't feel like I'm doing, I'm making any move by myself, for myself. It feels like I'm doing it for a greater purpose, if that makes any sense. And life has a way of putting you where you need to be, even though it doesn't make sense to you. But when you look back, all the pieces fall together and will make sense. And that's what I'm thinking is happening. That's what I know is happening for, for my life, but also what I know is happening for your lives. And you just have to trust it, you know? And throughout this entire journey, I've had multiple friends and people say to me like, Jess, you're crazy for this, but this is awesome. And what I like about that is that, you know, I feel like I'm kind of, not to make this about me or anything, but I feel like I'm, hopefully inspiring people to step out and to pursue their dream and to feverishly go about it and to not let anybody tell them no anything is possible if you set the intention and if you want it badly enough and when you're doing what you're meant to do and when you're doing what you love it fuels you and makes you feel so good but also it helps the world it helps other people to feel good it helps other people to step out and do what they want to do for themselves and we all ultimately end up being in a space where we're just attracting and doing what we love and there is nothing wrong with that and an one thing too that i've been i feel like philadelphia has neglected to give me not that that's a bad thing because everything comes with perfect timing is i feel like i have always been an earth child and a moon child and I haven't been able to see the moon. I have to go to certain spots in order to see the moon directly, although I work directly with the moon. And I feel like being in New Orleans, I can see the stars, I can see the moon, I can grow um, plants and stuff and get my hands in the dirt a little bit more than what I have now and what I've been able to do here now. Even though the apartment that I have now has the courtyard and the private garden space and it's obviously you know growing and doing well but I just want to take it to the next level I want it to be bigger I want it to be better and I want to be able to have a self-sustaining farm and that's the next level for me that's the next stage in my life and to be able to share that with my friends and my family the family that I have already and the family that ultimately I will create and these are things that were given to me through my mother and through my grandmother and my grandmother's mother and it's just time for me to, to, to put those practices into motion and to bring them into my life because ultimately that's what I want for myself. And I think that Philadelphia, I love Philly again because it has definitely made me driven and motivated, but it can't serve me in the way that, you know, I think that New Orleans will be able to and what New Orleans will bring. If I can have an expectation or what I think will happen, I think that the apartment that I have, it is in the French Quarter. It does have a courtyard, a private courtyard, which I'm very excited about. I will accept some clients um, on a case-by-case on a case 
basis, but my priority is writing and, and publishing because it's just time for that. But I think that will be a temporary spot for me in the, in the moment, but then I'm also setting the intention that I find my place, my home, ultimately, where I can have a garden and the chickens, three or four or five, not anything too crazy, and start a totally different life. Well, not a totally different life, but add on to the life that I've already started building for myself and then also be able, being able to share that with you guys. So that's it. That's pretty much all, all it for my life update. Uh, thank you guys again for being there with me and listening to this video and being my tribe, my friends, my astro loving family, um, for tuning in on Mondays and us connecting. Oh my gosh. Um, if you want, if you'll be around, I will be around. I think it's October, I'm sorry, September 20, let me pull it up, September, damn, I can't remember, I think it's September 20, I think is the storefront party, the grand, grand, the official grand opening, so I will be there if you guys will be around, I'm not sure if that's the exact date, I have so many dates running through my head, but I will link the actual party grand opening date below. I'll be there for the majority of the time and I'll put the invitation down below. So if you wanna meet up with me and come see the storefront, come meet Kat and Britt and I all together. We're also gonna be doing a girl boss live chat where we're answering any questions that, we're all girl bosses, we all run our own businesses and just going answering questions that you guys have as far as starting a business and going your own way and pursuing your dreams and as a woman, but also as a motivated individual, a go-getter, someone who's, you know, focusing on their dreams. These are things that we'll be talking about, we'll be answering. Sorry guys, my, um, my card, my SIM card or whatever the thing is, had too much space on it. But I'll post down below the dates for our grand opening and the times that I will be there so I can give you guys hugs, I can talk to you about magic, and meet you face to face, which is so important to me. <laughs> I can tell he loves it when I do that. And then also, there's something else that I wanna say but I can't remember, but either way, it's on and poppin'. These are the updates that have been going on in my life. They've been so exciting. I'm taking you with me. We're going to eat, we're going to cook. You're gonna see my apartment with me the same time that I see it, which is terrifying. But it should be cool. And I'm excited to live just total minimalistic in the city that I love. There's gonna be so much <laughs> that we're gonna get into. And uh, yeah, yeah. All right, though, but I'm out. I love you guys. Thank you again so much for being with me, for coming with me, and I promise to vlog, even if I look like crap like I do today. I promise to stay connected and to post all the time. I'm not gonna stop posting on Instagram. It's just probably gonna be a little bit more of my personal versus, you know, this blog is up, this is up. They'll, they'll be blogs. I just finished a, a monthly report, the monthly terascopes for October, so you guys will see that. All right, let me go snuggle my little kitty cat so that he doesn't feel neglected. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.